What's good about working for a franchise, you can come back and you don't have to worry about any of the ice-breaking business because you know everyone. So what was it like for you returning to the set and seeing all of your cast members again? It was good. I mean, uh, th you're exactly right. It's, it's kind of easier in a sense because you come back to a film where you don't have to do the intros. Everyone knows each other inevitably on a big film. You know, on a first one with a big cast, there's lots of kind of sussing each other out whereas um, now we know each other and people can kind of bounce in and do their bits and then head off and do it, the, the other stuff that they're doing as well. It felt a bit looser and then in terms of the actual movie itself it was great because you again you have you've, you've got rid of all the setup so you can really start kind of you know you can start heavy from the word from the word go really and that's true with this movie you know that it's kind of they're on the run from kind of about four minutes in but the level is so much higher for this film I think mm. because there are so many big names who have now stepped on to the cast we have Octavia Spencer and Naomi Watts we have actual big sets for every single mm. uh, faction we have Amity and Candor mm. and Erudite so everything seems so much bigger for this mm. film it does, yeah. I think they really, they really stepped it up. And they, you know, the the first movie was was very fun to do, and it was great. But they, the the good thing about a franchise is you're able to, you know, you're able to do it again. You have the opportunity. You're not to do, do it again, but to do another one. And it means that the positive parts of the first movie you can use, and the things that perhaps didn't work as well, then you can streamline it. And I feel and and hope that that people will see in this movie particularly that there's a lot of streamlining, and it's much more. And as a result, it's it's just it's much more fun and kind of kind of quick and, and and big and you know exciting. What did you learn on the first set that you took with you for Insurgent? I mean, lots of things. It was you know the Divergent was a was a good experience, and and you know Neil is a great guy and a and a cool director, very good director. Um, so so lots of lots lots of very good things. Um, I mean, one thing about the character in this, which is kind of nice is that in the first movie four you don't really get to know him for a long part of the film he's f fairly elusive whereas in this movie he you know him a bit better and he is a bit more open and kind of I don't want to say emotional because it's not like he's weeping or anything or like patting small puppies but you know <laughs> he's, a, he's a bit more you know there's more to it which is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Did you ever read Veronica Roth's short stories where it was from Four's point of view? No but I, I did ask her to, to basically Tell you. Vocally, yeah, <laughs> give them a synopsis. Not because I didn't want to read them, but I felt that, you know, she said herself, inevitably the films are different from the books. I mean, not only, uh, especially in this movie, you know, it, it's, an, it's, an, it's an adult action film, I feel like now. It's, it, it's kind of, it has the breadth of the YA thing, but it's very different. And also, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not the same age as the character in, in the book. So for that reason, I didn't particularly feel that it would necessarily be too helpful for me to read them. But pieces of plot which were useful I asked her to tell me you know how what happened with his parents you know those kind of mm -hmm. little pieces of information and this film is very action packed was there a lot of downtime in shooting Divergent and Insurgent did you have to train a lot in between or were you able to just jump back into it no because we all kind of you know went off and you do a couple of movies in between the films so you, you and and the films that I did were were not you know he didn't it would I wasn't supposed to be like Mr. Muscle, <laughs> yeah. so I kind of had to do the opposite. So when I when I get back to well, when we went to Atlanta, I kind of had to step my game up pretty quickly. <laughs> Four is a very strong character, of course. I mean, stronger than Eric, I would say, but he does have his own weaknesses. So mm. what would you say are his weaknesses? Dress. <laughs> <laughs> really, though. Yeah, no. In a way, uh, yes. His um, I guess he's his weaknesses are. Perhaps the fact that he, he's he's very morally, you know, his, his moral compass is very strong in the sense that he feels like he, he should do the, the, the right thing and, you know, he's kind of reluctant leader and all those things. But I think as a result, he makes some decisions late in the game, whereas he could have stepped up to it earlier. I like how protective he is in this film. He's always one step behind Tris, who just is reckless and runs off. Mm. But couple scenes later, he's there protecting her and st stepping in and saving her. That's mm. what I really like about him in this film. Oh, cool. Yeah, I like that element. And again, it's uh, different from the first in, in, in a way. He, he kind of has that in the, in the first movie, but here he's really, you know, as you say, he's trying to, he's trying to stop her vengeful, you know, impulsiveness um, and, and trying to quell her because otherwise she's going to kind of kill herself. <laughs> Did you always know that you wanted to be an actor? 
No, I don't think so. I, um, I mean, I definitely had done it for, for as a kid, you know. but but now I kind of came to it a bit later. But I, but I definitely, you know, yeah, I was. I definitely it was always in my wheelhouse. What did you do in order to get yourself in the door? Because it's not an easy industry. It's a tricky one because I, you know, lots of people. I'm sure. I don't come from a family who were involved in it in any way. I don't. I, don't, I didn't know anyone who was involved in it. Um, so my way of doing it was I went to school for it. So I, you know, I went to university, studied something else, and then I went to 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 a, to a you know place the old Vic where you kind of study it as it were, and then and then you get the opportunity to kind of meet a few people through that. But it is tricky. Once you became an actor, did you find that you ne- you needed more education or training to assist you on the job, or do you kind of learn everything that you need at some point and then you're just good to go for the rest of your career? Yeah, I think it's useful. I mean, a lot of people do do classes. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't do as many of them myself. Um, that's just my personal preference, but I think it does definitely help. Like anything, again, being an actor is a constant process of learning and every job is so different. And every person that you share a scene with or any, every director that you have or every situation even, whether, it, whether it's press, it's all different and it kind of shapes you and changes you in a different way. So you have to be willing to adapt at all times and never think that you know everything. watching this interview as always don't forget to subscribe and let us know what you think in the comment section below for the next made in hollywood interview click right here do it click it